Hey guys, Ewan here, and this video, first, we're gonna check out what happened at Toronto Pro, so we got the results, the winner is Joel Thomas, it's not Quinton area. To be honest, I was surprised, I was really convinced that Quinton is gonna win, because he had better lines, better structure, better, bigger and more detailed legs, overall nicer flow to his physique, but then there is something that I talked about in my last video, and that is density, maturity, thickness, roundness, and also graininess that Joel has, and Quinton just doesn't yet. And it's not a problem of conditioning, because take a look at his glutes when he turns around. They are sharper than Joel's, and that's, that's the body fat percent we're talking about. But look at the back, look at the, the density of the back. That's the maturity, you, you, you can see it, you can just see the maturity right there that, uh, that Joel has, and Quinton just doesn't yet. Also the thickness, the, the, the density of the back itself, the muscle density. So that's something that comes with years, as far as the structure, Quinton is a far better, far bigger potential than Joel. I can see this guy cracking the top five at the Mr. Olympia, you know, cracking the finals at the Mr. Olympia at some time in the future. Look at his abs and thighs, it's just perfect, right? I mean, how much better can this abs and thighs get? He can get a little bit deeper details in the abs, and of course, he can always be more conditioned, but it's really good, it's really good, it's much better than Joel Thomas in this one. So if you talk about the app development, uh, the, 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 the quad details and the development and the depth of the separation, it just uh, Quinton all day. But then there is, again, that density around us that you can kind of see in these photos, in some videos, in some photos, but it's probably something that you can see far better uh, in person if you're there, if, you, if you're in the judge's seat. So it wouldn't be fair to judge this show based on the photos and the videos. It's always different in person. I know that from my personal experience because I compete and I go to all the shows around here. But regardless, my personal choice, I mean, bodybuilding is subjective. Uh, and in my opinion, Quinton has a better structure, better genetics, better physique overall. But if you understand the judging criteria and you understand that Joel has better maturity, then it makes sense. I can see him winning this show. I can see why he won it. Now, Stanimal. In my Toronto Pro Prediction video, I said he's gonna win it. He ended up in fifth. I know it was a bold prediction. I was apparently wrong. It would be crazy for somebody who, who used to compete in men's physique to win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia so fast. And it's not that I wanted to be the first to say it and to risk it, you know, to be the one who, who, who saw it coming. No, I really felt like it, because these photos, he was posting a lot of photos. He, in his photos, he looked absolutely amazing. Anyways, he didn't win, he wasn't in top 2, top 3, he was 5th. Still, that's finals of a pro show in open bodybuilding, not super high level show, but still. Uh, the transformation that he made from his... Man's physique days, until now, is just something absolutely freaky. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Look at the difference. It, he just looks like a completely different person nowadays. Now, as far as his weaknesses, what he should work on, there are a few. So, for example, arms could be bigger. That's not that big of a deal. What is more important is the quad detail. You can see it clearly here compared to Quinton. So, the upper portion, the mid portion of the quad, the inner part just looks like a like a void. I would like to see more separation, deeper cuts. That would definitely add a lot to his physique, to his overall look. I don't know if it is genetic or the way he's training or something else, but if he can fix it, he should. Now also, the, the probably the biggest weakness of his is his lats. His lower lats, they are really weak, like he needs a lot more tissue in that area. I wouldn't say it's a problem with the structure, the insertions, I think it's just... The lack of muscle, and you know, he probably doesn't have the best uh, mind to muscle connection to the lads. His lads are not really uh, able to grow fast, they are a bit stubborn. You know, everybody has a stubborn body part, and it's definitely lower lads for him. They just look very, very thin. He needs to add a lot more tissue to those lads, and that will definitely make a change. So, guys, once again, Joel Thomas won, Quinton Area second, and Stanimal fifth. What are your thoughts on these results? Do you agree with them or not? Tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next I wanted to show you what Jeremy Potwin looks like right now, uh, since he decided to move to classic physique. I don't know if you guys follow man's physique, if you know who Jeremy Potwin is, but I'm sure most of you do. 
Anyways, he's a man physique competitor and he has world class genetics. But only for upper body, as far as we know, because he's one of those men's physique competitors who just really has small legs. Some of them have big legs, some of them have just no legs. And Jeremy was one of those guys. Remember when Margie Marvel is uh, called out the men's physique competitors when she said, just because you're shredded doesn't mean you're big, you shouldn't show your legs. And I'm sure she meant him when she said that, because he used to show his legs and they were definitely not big enough for his upper body. His chest, his arms, his back too were just ridiculous. He had a small waist, but the legs were just, yes, detailed, separated, lean, but flat, small. And then this happened. So he decided to move to classic physique and he decided to work on bringing the legs up. That's what everybody told him. And this is what he accomplished. His upper body is pretty much the same, but his legs came up big time. They're like doubled in size. So, as it turns out, he doesn't really have that bad leg genetics. He just probably, he didn't train them too hard or at all. I don't know. But apparently, as you can see, they can grow. They can get big. And right now, they are pretty big. I'm sure he has a pump. Yes, he says he has a pump here. And with a pump, with, with all the blood of his body right there in the legs, he looks even leg dominant <laughs> right here. So he's definitely making his uh, physique more balanced. And uh, I think sooner than later he will start the prep for his classic physique debut. He was attending a, a show, a classic physique show, and uh, they called him out on stage. He got up there and look at the way he was posing. He looks like he never did man's physique before. He even did that most muscular face-to-face -face with another competitor. So it looks like he left his board shorts way back in the past. It looks like he is a devoted bodybuilder right now. And look at the way he does the poses. Side chest, side tricep, front double bicep. Now look at when he does the back double bicep. <laughs> he even touches the glutes and the hamstrings. And the way he, he performs it, he looks like he has experience. I don't know for how long he was practicing posing. Uh, for, for bodybuilding, for classic physique, but it looks like he has been doing this for years. I'm guessing he was doing it back in the day when he was a man's physique competitor because he looks experienced. I don't think he learned this in the past six, seven, eight months or whatever it was when he decided to switch to classic. So here you can see his upper body genetics. You can see that this guy is very, very, he, he is exceptional, right? I mean, this is not something you see every day. This kind of chest. This kind of silly shape, like bubbly, round, freaky looking upper body, but still very, very classic and aesthetic with a small waist, with small joints. So this is one of those man's physique competitors who I'm very interested in seeing how will do on a classic physique stage because I think he has world class and very interesting genetics for classic physique. What do you guys think? Do you like his physique? Do you like his genetics? What do you think about his legs? Will they ever be world class? Did he bring them up enough? Should he bring them up more or did they grow too much? Whatever your thoughts are, tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next we have Regan Grimes, who posted a couple of shots with Jay Cutler, with Milo Sharchev, Regan's current coach, and Iris Kyle, 10 times Mr. Olympia champion. Quite a crew, right? And what is interesting here is that Regan looks absolutely ridiculous, he looks shredded. So, even though he posted this right now, I never saw these photos before, it's not recent, come on, he's not looking this straight at this point, no, he's in the offseason, actually in a rebound phase, so I'm sure he got watery, not really fat, but he cannot look this dry, not in this, not in this time period, but what I found more interesting here is Jay Cutler himself, Jay here was teaching Regan how to pose and he did a side tricep himself, and what you will be able to see is that Jay Cutler still has it. I mean, he still didn't lose uh, all of his muscle, not even close. You can see that his arm looks still pretty big, pretty full, pretty round. You can see a little bit of delt popping right there. It looks good, it looks lean. Uh, you can see a little bit of chest and overall the size of this guy. Like, he didn't lose. I mean, he, he didn't get skinny like some bodybuilders do. And I'm sure that Jay is not trying at all. You know, many bodybuilders, when they retire, they actively try to downsize. It's not easy, it's not that easy to lose the muscle, especially when you're a genetic freak like some of these guys. So they have to eat like very little protein, and I mean food in general, like eat two times a day or something like that, like not to worry about the food at all. And they, some of them, with fast metabolisms, lose 
weight over time and they lose quite a bit for example like dave palombo and some of the others they they, they became skinny pretty much not really skinny they're all around 200 pounds or so which is not skinny but for their standards for what they used to be yeah it kind of is jay is one of those guys who really never had a problem with putting on the mass he was always a big guy he was always a big kid you know he wasn't the guy with fast metabolism he had a fast metabolism for sure but he was also always you know kind of big he had a big frame and now even though he's i'm sure not trying very hard he's still retaining a lot of size he's still a big dude right and he's not fat at all uh, last time we saw his abs they were shredded so i'm sure they are still he's very lean even at this point at the end of 2022 so i'm really curious what's gonna happen with jay in the future will he ever decide to you know get a little bit more toned or something like that because it's so easy for him to maintain this kind of physique what do you guys think about jay cutler right now do you think he should do a comeback or something <laughs> just kidding of course whatever your thoughts are guys tell me in the comment section down below like this video if you enjoyed it and for more content like this subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching all the best and bye bye